Are we rolling? We're going. Okay, let's see if it happened. Hi everybody. Hey Alex. Hey Neil. Hi Robbie. Hi Gary. Welcome. Everyone's here before me. Oh, how is everybody? I am absolutely exhausted. Very, very emotionally drained today. Dragon meat was a lot. Lots of lovely friendly faces there, but it was, it was busy, it was busy. Hmm. I guess the most exciting thing was that I got to see uh, Ian Livingston. I generally pop to his stand and say hello when he's at Dragon Meat. But he did sign a book and he said he might be able to come and have a chat with me, which would be very, very cool. Hopefully he hasn't seen the mess we've been making of our adventures together. And I have my Warhammer chair, Hi Clegatron, which is very exciting. Um, yeah, so I should probably take the D&D &D, <laughs> D &D hoodie off. I'm very dragon themed today. Hi Stuart, did nothing this weekend and was great. Hi Callum, good, 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 good. Well, yes, I have had a, I woke up completely um, paralyzed with anxiety and worry. Uh, got out of bed very late, made some phone calls, spoke to my brother and some friends, ate a bunch of food, trying to just relax. And yeah, I'm just anticipating a very full on week ahead. I've got lots of um, lots of stuff to do that's scaring me. So, and I know it's going to be quite draining. And I always think when you have like all these tasks to do, and it's so cold, it's so dark. I've got to be quite far from home. Yeah, it's just, it just. I'm scared. I'm overwhelmed. I'm feeling the overwhelm right now. Oh yay, Neil! Your t-shirt arrived. Fantastic. Hello, Aztec. Oh my goodness, you're on time. Hey Traitor Guardsman, good evening. Yay. Um, welcome, welcome everybody. Oh my goodness, we have 19 people watching the stream. So I hope everyone is okay and they've had a good week and a good weekend. Um, I'm going to go right ahead and click on to our Citadel Chaos and see where we are. Does anybody remember? Let's have a look. Oh yes, we got bashed about a bit by the suits of armour, I think. That's what was going on. Um, so let's see if we can look at our stats. Oh, we're Derek Smalls. Okay, that's all the general stuff. Let's have a look at our adventure street this sheet. Okay, so we have not doing so badly on our skill, stamina, and luck. And we have quite a few spells left. We just got our, I think we just, yeah, we lost two stamina from those armors. Um, but otherwise, we're looking good. So, the suits of armor, should we release this bookmark? The suits of armor are a variety of shapes and sizes, and you shiver to think of the strange creatures they must have been made for. Perhaps you may yet come across some of them. As you examine one particularly grand suit, its hand suddenly rises and whacks you across the face. We got beep slapped completely. You stagger back, spitting blood. You lose two stamina points. But the armor makes no further move and you decide it may be prudent to get away from these hostile armor suits. You may either proceed up the left-hand staircase by turning to 19 or up the right-hand staircase. I, what does Robbie say? Robbie's saying, I remember a quest to build a chair. Was that part of the adventure? 100%. Absolutely. <laughs> You know it. Okay. So our first poll of the night, a nice easy one, if I can type. I forgot I can never type on this keyboard. Let's have at it, friends. What are we gonna do? Excuse my um, big gulp. I'm staying hydrated this evening. Oh, everyone, so many people want to go left. 
Okay. It's looking like eight people have voted and 88% of us want to go left. Let's do a left. Can we say that one of our items is a magic chair now? Yes, we can. I think it would only be correct to do so. Thank you all for, for joining that stream. Two hours of chair building nonsense. The staircase, the staircase creaks as your foot falls on it. You try to ascend as quietly as possible, but the old timbers groan under your weight. Suddenly one of the stairs clicks as if to trigger a switch of some kind. To your surprise, all of the stairs flick downwards. You are now standing on a smooth, steep slope. Try as you might, you cannot keep your balance and you fall down the slope, tumbling head over heels. If you wish to use a levitation spell, you may fly up and out of danger to land on the balcony above. Otherwise, we must turn to 254. Okay. All right, then. This is our second choice, isn't it? Let's see what we do. Okie dokie. Say, no, not a Q&A. We want to do a poll. We could do a Q&A. Uh, uh, use levitate. Okay. I feel like I'm doing everything in slow motion this evening. Sorry if I'm slow tonight. I feel, I'm feeling like six out of 10 personally. So maybe we're only getting 60% good, but I'm doing my best. Oh, we have two Southpaws in the chat. Two left-handers. Okay, what does the poll say? 10 votes and everyone would like us to levitate. Okay. I think that's, I mean, we have so many spells, we may as well. Let's see what happens. Let's let's fly out of danger. Yay! You chant the words of the levitation spell using your scroll and you float safely to the top of the staircase. Amazing, amazing. Very cool, well done us. We should probably have a look at our spells and see how many we have. Okay, we still have a levitation left. We got so lucky with all of our spells. Ah, oh, along the balcony, there are three doors. We can go left, middle, or right. Which door do we choose? Let's have a look. Is anybody painting in the chat? If so, what are you painting? What colors are you using? Are you using Games Workshop's own paints? Are you air spraying? Should you be air spraying this late at night on a Sunday? Ooh, middle is coming in strong. Left-handed, the sign of witchcraft. I'm interested why Stuart T has an alias of Sharrowkin. Just while we're chatting and waiting for people to vote, did anybody see this person who asked me to date him? He was like, I live in Brighton, I'm 33, in a YouTube comment. So I said, you have to run it by Arbiter Ian and Historicus Jim. So I think 33 might be a little bit young for me, but wow, my ego. Wow, I won't be able to get my head through any of these doors. Um, but it would be great if Jim and Ian approved of any suitor. Um, Oh, Jim is painting some Sylvaneth. Age of Sigmar Wood Elves. This is interesting. I'm sure it is. Is it Dragonlance? I'm sure there's loads, but Sylvan means woodland, doesn't it? Gary's not painting, but he uses mainly Valley Joe. Good, 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 good. Welcome, Gary, our official librarian of the channel. Okay, so that poll looks like pretty sincerely middle. So we're going to try the door in the center. What's gonna happen to us? Clegatron is painting up Phoenix Lords. You listen at the door and can hear squeaky voices laughing and squabbling. You try the handle and the door opens. Inside is a brightly colored room. A few small beds are in one corner and strewn about the floor are small mannequins of various brutish creatures. Along the right hand wall is a large box and just beyond the box is a door. In the center of the floor and looking up at you quizzically are three infant creatures. They are human-like but have green skin, pointed ears and slit-like eyes. What will your approach be? 
Okay, so there's three little orc babies, I guess. Oh, if you draw your sword and prepare to fight, that's one option. We can look in our pack for something to offer them, or we can walk confidently across the room to the far door. I've, I've got, I'm having a um, deja vu. We took this route last time, didn't we, says Callum. Yes, but I can't remember what we did. What did we do? Does anybody remember? I mean, we normally ask Neil, don't we? Good old Neil. No spoilers for upcoming heresy books, please. Yes, no spoilers. You're an admin, Jim, Jim I think. So if you see any, you can, you can just delete them out. Orc babies, they make your nightmares come true. Orc babies, they'll do the same for you. Okay. Oh no, gosh. Gary, I'm sorry you have a bad back. I have a physio appointment tomorrow for a bad neck and back. But I've been, I went to the physio in October and they gave me some uh, exercises and I just fell into this awful anxiety and I completely forgot them. So I have to go and fess up that I don't know what exercises I'm doing and I have been going very easy but slightly on the Panadol. I felt very guilty yesterday. I couldn't carry a lot of shit because my back was just like V-bad, back and neck. Last time, says David, we confidently strode across the room. How did that work out for us? Um, Traitor says, I bet a lot of left-handed in the hobby. Ooh, that's an interesting theory. Um, mm -mm -mm. Good evening, Corpin. Corpin, uh, welcome. So it looks like we have 44% out of 16 votes saying to look in our pack. So let's take a little look-see, shall we? What do we got? Okay, so we have nothing that we could offer, which concerns me because it feels like we've got to quite a far point without any inventory. And this is what happened last time. Do we draw our sword? Do we head for the far door or do we use an illusion spell? Let's start a poll. Now, actually, before we do this, let's do this poll. Just ch testing a theory. Because my interest has been piqued. So before we uh, turn to this decision, please tell us what is your dominant hand? Are you a left-handed or a right-handed person? Wow, that was loud. That's my WhatsApp just clicking away there. What do we got? 14 people have voted. There are 26 in the stream. I don't know if we can make this an official declaration with just 16 voters in the room. There are 25 voters, so that's like nine people that we'd be discounting. But it's closer than I thought. This is so interesting. Okay, so with 16 votes, 44% are left-handed and 56% are right-handed. Isn't that interesting? I thought left-handed was quite rare. Who knew? Well, we've done some Warhammer science today. That's so interesting. I love that. Okay, let's get on with our game. What are we doing? Are we gonna draw our sword? Oh, I can see that my um, little box is over the... That's not helpful. Maybe if I move the old thingy that might be easier we'll see see if this works okay so that's crazy when you can see moving it Corpin I think I voted left by mistake lol <laughs> draw a sword um Head for the door. Let's see, let's see, what do we do? Left-handedness is roughly 10% of the general population. Is that true, Neil? Wow, that's a scary statistic. Apparently left-handers die earlier on average. What? 
Is that the impact of living in a world that is made for the alternate side? That sounds not very fair. Well above average for left lefties is normally about 10%. So yeah, that whoever had that theory that uh, if you like Warhammer, you may be more likely to be left-handed. Looks like you could be onto something. How extraordinary. Whoops. Okay. So we have 19% saying, draw our sword. We have 31% saying, head for the door. And 50% are saying, use your illusion, baby. For those of you who remember that particular album, none of your offerings are of particular interest to these creatures who are much more interested in you than your gifts. You try to impress them with an illusion spell, creating a colorful rainbow across the entire room. Yay, rainbow! I love that. That's so my channel. They are fascinated and allow you to pass through the front door. Through the far door. Sorry, I'm just muting this WhatsApp. So hopefully it won't be too noisy. Okay, let's successfully go through the door. We need Ned Flanders' left orium. Left-handed people are witches, so of course they die earlier. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's just more left-handed people like watching you. In which case, left-handed people are lovely, let's face it. So we leave the room and head down a short corridor. Some meters down, you find yourself at the foot of a staircase. This is a spiral staircase which leads right up into the Citadel Tower. You climb the stairs cautiously and eventually arrive on a small landing with two doorways in front of you. Will we take the left-hand door or the right-hand door? Ooh. Are we near the end? Because I feel like, once again, we don't have enough stuff. What's going to happen? Which door do we do? Let's see. Left or right? Okay, let's have a little look. Left or right, which way do we leave? Okay. Sinister is Latin for left, Dexter is Latin for right. Oh, that's interesting. I knew Sinister. I didn't know Dexter. It's not those words, right? It's more Latin-y sounding words. Dexter for dexterous and dexterity, I guess. Oh, this is close. It's 50-50. We need more votes. Only 15 votes. Okay. <laughs> 16 votes. Okay, finally, oh my goodness. How do I stop this WhatsApp popping off? Is it gonna be possible? Crikey. I hope we'll have to just, keep, oh, we have to keep our fingers crossed that that chat quietens down. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're going left, 17 votes. Let's take the left hand door. The door opens, allowing you into a large circular room. You scratch your head quizzically. In the center of the room, you can see a small island surrounded by a wide trench on which stands a chest locked with metal fastenings. The trench is too wide to jump and is very deep. Just inside the door is a length of rope. A door leads from the room opposite the door you came in through. How will we deal with this strange conundrum? Do we ignore the box and simply walk around the trench? Do we cast a strength spell or are we going to pick up the rope and formulate a plan? Let's see. What do we do? Well, I don't know what we're going to do. You will tell me what we're going to do. Uh, these are uh, involved answers in this, in this poll. plan. Ah, oh, was the chest a trap last time? What happened, Dave? Can you remember? We've been here. The left, the leftwardness of this chat demands inquisitory, <laughs> inquisi inquisitorial attention. No inquisitors are welcome to the chat. They are like such joy killers. They just want to piss on the bonfire, have to do everything by the book. And not this book. Okay. I'll, I know 
know, it's great. The music's working at the moment, isn't it? I think we can choose other music as well. Mm. Where's the options? Have a bit of haunted hallways. Superhero swing. Tavern Tales. That's quite nice. Ooh, foreboding Forest. Icy Tundra. Ooh, that's a bit grating. Dungeon Delve. Stargazing. Oh, pretty. There's so many. This is like choosing a ringtone. Okay. Let's get back to it. Let's resume. Okay, so... Oh, welcome. Oh, hi, Jasper. Thank you for joining my members uh, channel. Uh, so we, if you remember, you get shout outs on the channel. And if there's a tie break, you get to break some votes when we're voting. And also I'm going to do some members only Q&A videos and lives, I think, because it's only fair you get something for supporting. So we'll figure that out. Um, so uh, the chest was a trap last time. Didn't we use the rope and it was too heavy and fell in the pit? We tried to rope and it pulled us into the abyss. Okay, so at the moment, there are 19 votes and everyone, 47 people have voted to pick up the rope. So we're going to need some more chats and we're going to need some more votes or we're going to just fall in the pit. And I'm not sure what happens when we fall in the pit, if the book will make us go right back to the beginning of the game or not. Does anybody know? We've got 20 votes. Still pick up the rope is number one. Yes, you get unicorns if you are a member. So please, yeah, make the most of your unicorns, people. Yes, any love or uh, words of affirmation or reassurance we can share this evening, I think would be good. Um, yeah. Okay. It's a trap. I mean, there's 21 votes of 31 watching and the rope is still the top vote. Um, the second, we burned a, lev a levitate last time. So at the moment, 48% is saying pick up the rope and plan. 38% is saying ignore the box and walk to the other room and 14% are saying strength spell and leap so I mean I'll leave it one more minute but if the votes don't change I'm gonna have to go by the vote aren't I because the silly principle of this whole stream is that you decide our our destiny Hey, Jesper, wee with your unicorns. Oh, lordy, lordy. This is concerning, everybody. We're just going to die. Okay. I mean, I mean, I am your servant in this. You make the decisions. So I think we're going to pick up the rope <laughs> and probably die. Let's see what happens. At least we'll all go together. I keep looking at the votes, hopefully, but it's still, yeah, 48% is pick up the rope and plan. An idea strikes you. You tie the rope into a loop with a slip knot at the end. Whirling the rope around your head, you try to snare the chest. After several throws, your loop goes over the chest and the slip knot tightens around it. You pull and the chest shifts. You pull once and it falls over the edge and down into the trench but to your dismay the weight of the box is enormous and it pulls you right over with it as was predicted rt rt i mean we could do that but the basis of this chat is that you decide hello tuonen lintu no spoilers no spoilers this week please peace and love no spoilers um hi koyura welcome welcome yeah i also forgot to tweet and remind people I was feeling a little bit low, so I've forgotten to do all my, hey, look, come look at me things. So the chat's a little bit lighter, but that's okay. The people that need to be here are here. 
Okay, so we have another option now. Bearing in mind, we only have one levitate spell, but we also could die. Is it levitate or die? Let's see what happens. Welcome, RTRT. I, if you're new to the chat, welcome, welcome. So nice to have you here. Wow, pretty immediate jump into that. Everyone's like, levitate! Okay. Yeah, 13 votes and everyone's on levitate. So sensible. Gary, I would prefer cake or death. <laughs> a cake is a lie, Gary. Chat votes isn't really making a good argument for democracy. Well, also, it's showing that left-handed people are risk-takers. Neil, thank you so much for gifting some memberships. How does that work? Do you get to choose who to pop those memberships to? Wow, that's so nice of you. Welcome. Welcome to the members club. Change, Daniel, Karaxi, Hassan Hani, and Khan. Welcome. Khan, not corn, we hope. Very kind. Thank you so much, Neil, for doing that. Yeah, how does that work? Does that just uh, randomly pick members? It's so great to have more members to the channel. More space marines to the party. Okay, we're going to levitate. You release the rope and float into the air, dropping back onto the ground at the rim of the trench. You curse at the fiendish trap that's been laid for greedy adventurers like yourself. You move to the door opposite your entrance and try the handle. We leave through the door and find ourselves at the foot of another spiral staircase leading up into the Black Tower. Oh no, now it's in the wrong place because there's a nice little illustration of a scroll there. You can't win, can you? Um, oh, no. Where do we need to go? Here. Um, climbing the stairs, you eventually come to a landing where a single door is the only way onwards. You try the door, it opens slowly. Oh. You feel yourself sucked into the room. This is such a deja vu. As if by magic, your torch flickers and dies. The room is pitch black. From nowhere yet everywhere comes a mocking laugh which fills the room. Foolish adventurer, says another voice, which changes its tone from, oh my god, I remember this, which changes its tone from high to low as it speaks. Welcome to the home of the Ganges. Unfortunately, it will be the last anyone, the last room you will ever see. Ah, oh, but of course you can't see, can you? But we can see you, can't we, brothers? And laughing voices come from all around you. Suddenly, a ghostly white luminous face flies towards you. You recoil in horror, throwing yourself on the ground and begin to feel very frightened. Lose one skill, two stamina and one luck point for your fear. Oh, yay, Robbie! Woo -woo -woo! Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Thank you for giving out some more membership. That's so lovely. We have... So that's 10 new members in the stream today. Welcome. Welcome, Simon says, make paint play. You should join us on a Wednesday night where we do show me the minis. Well, welcome, PT. Welcome, Gavella Glan. Welcome, Edward Woden. Welcome, Grax. Thank you so much, Robbie. That's so kind. Yay, we have so many Space Marine members joining us. Just in time to possibly die a horrible death. Uh, playing this adventure. Once again, my little box is in the wrong area. Let's pop it to the bottom. I'll get good at this one day. Okay, so pretty much the whole stream are members, so welcome everybody. So great to have you all here. Um, I'll stop moving my little thing around. I'm just trying to find a sweet spot for it. So we've lost a bunch of our stats. How are we doing? You know what? This could be worse. We have 15 stamina. We still have luck. We still, you know, could be a lot worse. We have our scroll of luck. We have an enchanted dagger and we have some spells left. But we don't have anything other than a backpack and a lantern. Hmm. What's going to happen? Let's find out. How will you escape the wrath of the Ganges? To cast a fire spell, turn to 85. To try an illusion spell, 
Well, we can't do that. If you wish to feel in your backpack for an artifact or draw our sword. I feel like we don't have anything handy in our backpack, do we? How to escape? Help me, Obi Nut One Kenobi. Well, we have like 10 Space Marine members in the chat, so I'm sure that can help us. 10 new Space Marine members. Why do we keep losing? Why do we have no equipment ever? We never get any equipment. We're so bad at this. Okay. My previous declaration about there being no skill damage keeps being proven wrong over and over. Yes, Cole Europe. Maybe they've changed this for the... They've changed it for the game. I don't know. Yay. Thank you so much, Robbie. That's so kind of you. Um, and... I guess the membership lasts for a month for everybody. I don't know how it works, but you're so welcome. Say hi. There are going to be some confused people who've just kind of flicked through the stream and they're like, how did I become a member of this person? David, I don't think six skill and seven luck is going to cut it. Neil, we need to explore the bottom of the tower more thoroughly. But Neil, is it that we miss the opportunities to do that again and again? I don't know. So the people have spoken, and they have spoken that they would like to do a fire spell. So let us bring the fire. You cast your spell and wait for a fireball, oh no, to appear on the end of your torch. The torch flickers just enough for you to see that there is a door on the far side of the room, but then goes out again. The Ganges laugh once more at your efforts to thwart them. You feel a blow on the head which knocks you to the ground again. Lose two stamina points. What will you try next? Oh no! Oh no! This is not going so well, kids. What will we try? I mean, I think we all know there's nothing in the backpack. It's like the hopeless kind of rummage, isn't it? Let's see what we do. Eek! I feel like an outsider already. Oh, Tuonin, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, sword work last time, well remembered. Uh, RTRT says, luck bills are fun in most systems. Roll the die and take the chance. Uh, Stuart says, fireball is a proper God Emperor fearing response. Stuart, are you my more time uh, player slash writer, Stuart? I think I know who you are. Magic chair time. What could the magic chair do in this situation? I w I w I'm worried what kind of lame fireball was that? We are not shooting on all cylinders, are we, for sure? Okay, we have 17 votes out of 28. 18 votes out of 28 saying to draw our sword. And it's two thirds, so I'm going to end the poll. And we're going to draw our sword. Oh my god. Somebody said the sword thing worked. Who was that? Okay, so not did only Tuon and Lintu tell me the spoiler of Omega last week. This week they have doomed us. A silence spreads over the room. Suddenly a blood-curdling scream comes from one corner and a hideous face appears in the air, shooting towards you, screaming as it comes. Your hair stands on end and your legs turn to jelly. Somehow, you manage to reach the door, fling it open and race through. However, you've forgotten that you are high in a tower and the balcony has no railing. You tumble over the ledge and fall straight down. We do not have a levitation spell because everybody voted to use the rope and we have failed in our mission. Oh, crikey. This is a lot, people. Oh, gosh. Okay, take a deep breath. Let's click this button and see what happens. You are dead. Your quest to assassinate the dread sorcerer Balthus Dyer and save the good folk of the Vale of Willow has come to an untimely end. The end. Wow. Wow, we're dead, everybody. We are dead. Wow, that's quite brutal, actually. I thought it would give us an option to go back. Crikey. Well, what do we do now, everybody? I don't think we had any good options at that point. Last time we tried to levitate here and it failed. 
I think we either need an illusion or we need a we needed an illusion spell or we needed a trinket or something that we haven't picked up. So the chair didn't make any difference. Callum, no, because I'm not playing a Warhammer game. Um, Fabian, back to our last bookmark. Oh, shit. Good. A shout, Fabian. Thank you. I mean, it's still quite far in. Do we think we could win from this point? The suits of armor? This is where we started again. Robbie saying, go from the save and do not pick up the rope. Mom spaghetti indeed. To own and Lintu, I'm just not going to listen to anything you say from now on. There is one item in particular you need to get past the Ganges. Like, is it absolutely like you can't pass without it, Neil? David, I mean, adventurers dying because of greed is unheard of, right? <laughs> Alex, should have used the chair like a pro wrestler to smite the Ganges. <laughs> I mean, it's heavy enough. The Emperor does protect. Um, oh, Neil has retracted his message. So. Gary said start again. Oh, Collier, you were doing Eminem. That I get the spaghetti reference now. So Neil has withdrawn his suggestion that we... Neil is kind of helping us along with some background info here. Neil, what do you reckon? Are we going to... Is there any point going from here? Or do we just not have what we require? Just wait. No pressure, Neil. Just let us know what you think. There's only 30 people watching, waiting for your answer. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was a bit spoilery, but you read it before I could react. Am I remembering right that the game had an automat feature? Might be worth doing some deliberately opposite option choices. It did. Yeah, we haven't done a lot when you look at the map, actually. That's quite interesting. So we could. We could. I don't know. I'd like to hear from Neil if it's basically futile to continue from this point without the item that has been spoiled. Uh, like, could we get, could we avoid, I don't know. I need Neil to write more because my brain is like not good right now. Callum, I think there are two items we need to succeed and I don't think we got either. Surely we're not starting this adventure again. Are we starting the adventure again? Let's see. We've got all these new members now. They might not have seen the start of the game. Everyone's like, yes, we are. Well, let's look at our bookmarks. Okay. We can we can go back. We're going to finish this quest if it kills us, which it does quite regularly. Okay. We have two starting options, two bookmarks set. And I can't remember how far back either of these are. So let's look at the map. So... With the narrow hallway option, we are this far in the map. If we go to the other option, oh, oh, it looks quite close to each other. We're just chatting to the butler. 
So let's see what we've got in our backpack. Nothing really any different. Oh no, does this take us back to the before the game of knifey knifey? <laughs> that was fun, remember? Okay. So everyone's saying we're going to start again with the butler. Okay, I feel so for, sorry for the new people who are like, what is happening right now? Just chaos. We like to play these books through the warp, is what happens. We get turned upside down. Oh, also, I found out when I was doing the chair stream, there were friends of mine watching, not saying anything, just lurking, just laughing at me. Always encouraging. So we have 12 votes of 34. I think we're going to start with the butler. Um, mm -mm -mm. Here we go. Let's all try and remember our past mistakes. We can't get that lucky with knifey knifey again, surely, can we? Probably not, but that was an epic game. Butlers are for Lara Croft and walk in freezers, says RTRT. And I'm comp as you can see, I am completely playing by my own rule, which is like, you have the final decision. Even if it's a silly decision, you are all responsible for it. It is Citadel of Chaos, it is indeed. Aztec has uh, retracted a message. We have 34 people following the stream right now. Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to Scary Sunday Gaming. Let's try and beat that anxiety out of our chests. Okay, eight votes and 89% want to ring that bell. Ring my bell. Ring my bell. Yep, ring bell, 92% with 12 votes. There are 34 people watching, so... I kind of like to take it to 15 so we know that it's a fair bet for the majority. What? Jesper, thank you. That's so nice of you. Well, wow. Oh my God. Someone called Gnome Todd is watching and now is a member. Kyle is a member. Stephen is a member. More people are membering. Wow. Thank you. In the words of Owen Wilson. Wow. Wow. That was a terrible Owen Wilson. So Dave... Who is that poor human who was like, I feel left out? <laughs> oh no, Tuonen, I'm sorry, you're still left out. Um, thank you so much, Jesper. The Space Marine Army are growing. I think pretty much most everybody's a member. There are 35 of us watching. So welcome, so, so welcome. Yay! Oh, this that is uplifting. <laughs> that is uplifting. Hallelujah. Praise you all. Thank you so much. Um... We're going to ring the bell. Okay. After several moments, the door opens slowly and a hunchbacked, misshapen creature with rotten teeth, ragged hair and tattered clothes stands in front of you. Yes. <laughs> what can I do for you? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> what can I do for you? Growls the half-human creature. I am expected, you reply, and walk past him through the door with confidence. He's a little bewildered by your manners and stammers, not knowing whether to challenge you or not. Which way to the reception room, you demand? He squints at you through one eye and motions towards a left fork in the passageway, a short distance ahead. If you choose to believe the butler and take the left fork, turn to page 243. Or if you distrust this shifty creature and take a right fork, turn to page 2. Let's see. Trust the butler. Trust the butler. Don't trust the butler. You all love to go left, don't you? Let's see what we do. Oh, also, I wanted to show you all that um, my friend Hamilton sent me a Titan. I'm going to show it to you now. He specially found it for me because he knows I love a Titan. Can you see? Don't you love a Titan? Whatever you do, whatever you do. There's a delay on my camera, so I don't know if this is in focus or not. It might be incredibly infuriating to you. I think it's a special... It was specially created for a game. I don't know which one, but 
I now have my first Titan, and it's not the Titan of my dreams, as you all know I want a full-size Titan to take to play at Warhammer World, but it's my first token Titan. I'm on the journey to owning a Titan. Okay. Uh, Sunday scaries are, I have a horrible anxiety on a scare, uh, on a Sunday night, so this is how we overcome. And I have a really amazing big Asda, so I could go there anytime up to 11, well maybe 10 o'clock on a Sunday, I, but I'm never fearful of Asda. Alex, we will be a legion soon, I love that. Thank you again, Jesper, that is so great of you. Oh, Stuart, we need to get you membered up. Sunday trading law, scary even in the Ganges. You have no idea. Try growing up in the 70s and 80s. Sundays? You couldn't do anything. Robbie, I think we believed him last time. Call your, I think we went left last time and it was okay. I don't remember. Uh, um, Callum, we trusted him last time. We believed last time and got to play some games. Oh, Jesper. Nice. Epic Titan. Oh, old school Diddy Titan. Yay! If anyone has more information about that Titan, I'd love to know more. So easy to forget about after a long week, I know. Aztec says, cool. An OG Warlord, very special. What looks like one of the original Warlord Titans from the old box set. Neil says, that's an OG Adeptus Titanicus model from the late 80s. So very cool. And... The poll is 50-50. Hmm. Jesper, can you break the tie? Should we trust the butler? 37 people are watching. A full-size titan. You need to talk to the fabricator general of the Mechanicus of Mars. I don't want, like, one from 40k. I want one from Games Workshop or a Warhammer shop. I think... I think we're going to trust. There's a little bit of lag between me asking and Jesper answering. So I'm going to just trust the butler. Okay. The passage runs along for several meters and then ends at a door. You listen at the door and can hear a deep, heavy breathing coming from inside, as if some large creature was asleep in there. Cautiously, you try the handle and the door opens. Just inside, although the room is dark, you can see that a very large goblin-like creature is asleep on the floor. Do we risk tiptoeing into the room? Or do we return to the fork and try the right-hand passage? Okay. I like the music now. Yeah, we went, we've gone left, Jesper. Thank you. Neil, I think a full-size 40k Warlord Titan model is about £1,500. That is insane. But, Neil, what might happen is someone might be clearing their flat out. And they might be like, oh, I don't play Warhammer anymore. I'm having a baby. What do I do with this Titan? And we know what happens. Um, if I were a millionaire, I'd definitely have some full-size Transformers. I'd pay some mechanics to carve up some 80 sport cars. Wow, that would be epic. Sharolin, in the words of Fox Mulder from X-Files, trust no one. Oh, come on, people. Okay, so we have 50-50. No, 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 we have 16 votes. Tiptoe into the room is winning. Let us tiptoe into the... Tiptoe in the tulips. Up -dum -bum. Oh, gosh. You tiptoe into the room, the room is gloomy and the air is damp. A crude wooden post is nailed to one wall with several hooks on it. There are two doors in the far wall leading onwards. On the post hanging on the wall is a makeshift mirror. But as your torch lights the mirror, its reflection is thrown across the eyes of a sleeping giant who grunts and stirs. Oh, one eye opens and then another. And seeing you, it springs to its feet. It grabs an axe which it was using as a pillow and quickly undoes the leather sheath to reveal a sharp bronze head. This creature is a gark, large and brutish. Garks are half goblin, half giant, bred by master sorcerers for their aggressive character. Although somewhat stupid, they are rather tough beasts with a warlike nature. Will we make a dash for the doors? Will we draw our sword? Will we apologize? Or will we try to use a spell scroll? 
Yes, totally having deja vu, but actually can't remember what we did at all. I think it just shows that my memory is shot to bits. It's too late to apologize. Or is it? Let's find out. There are 37 people in the chat. Let's poll. Have at it. What will we do? Cloakroom again. Apologize 100% straight from the bat. Nine people apologize. 93% <laughs> say apologize. We're so polite. I love that about my channel. My members are polite. We're going to say we're really sorry we woke you up. We didn't mean to. We don't want any trouble. We love what you've done with the place. This mirror is beautiful. Ah, uh, Jesper, I remember this well. Okay, let's end the poll with 20 votes and let us apologize. We're not haughty. We understand when we've done wrong. What will your approach be? You may either tell the creature that you're a guest or you may try to bribe the guard by offering it three gold pieces or by using a fool's gold spell to create some gold to offer it. If you wish to tell a gark you're a guest of the Citadel, turn to 294. Well, that's the only option that we have, so... The gark straightens up, lowers its axe and begins apologising to, to you for being asleep at its post. At its insistence, you agree not to tell anyone. The creature offers to take your tunic, but you decline its offer and press onwards. Turn to 99. Yay! Well remembered us. Leaving the chamber, there are two doors in front of you. If you take the left-hand door, 52. If you take the right-hand door, turn to 38. So, previously we went into the games room and that took us fairly quickly onwards to the dining hall and the nursery. I'm just going to remind everybody what we did in the past. So let's have a choice. Stormlord is awesome, says Jaguar. What is Stormlord? Is that a Titan? Which door? Which door shall we take? Welcome to the chat, everybody, if you're just joining. This is, I think, our fourth, fifth attempt to beat the Citadel of Chaos, and we are on fire. RT, I'm leaving the heat on as I go out to get a Chinese takeaway. Please don't do that. We're already stressed enough as we are with anxiety on a Sunday night. Please turn it off. I'm sure the building will be fine. Turn the heating off. It's not worth it. Crikey. Map could be clearer, but looks like we went left before, so I vote right. And indeed, Collier Rutt, so have the majority. With 18 votes, 67% have said that they would like to go right this time. So let's see what happens. Let's keep up this narrative. The door opens onto a short passageway, which is paved with small stones. A short distance on... a. a a short distance further on and an ornately carved door marks the end of the passageway but just before the door a side passage leads off to the left you approach the door listening for any signs of life inside hmm as you touch the handle a voice says do not knock just enter from inside will you enter the room as instructed or will you decide against entering this room and take the passage leading off to the left what will we do Enter the room. Heating off. Good, RT. That makes me feel good. I do worry about those. I'm imagining one of those little heaters that is independent. Mm-hmm. 86%. Seven votes. 78% say, enter the room of nine votes. Hmm. 11 votes. 12. <laughs> 13. There are 40 of us in the room, so I feel bad about going early. Ideally, you'd want to get at least half. Oh, two people just left, so that's great. We only need to get up to 18. We've got 16 votes, 17 votes. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why I give us rules. It's not like 
the BBC are going to come and tell us off for competition law. Okay, so with 20 votes, it looks like we are going to enter the room. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You enter the room, which is evidently a library of some sort. Books stretch from ceiling to floor on each wall. Gary, it's a library! Uh, books stretch from ceiling to floor on each wall, and several tables and chairs are lined down the centre of the room. At the far end sits a dark-skinned man who looks up from, at you from a book over narrow eyeglasses. Behind him is a door. Yes, what is it? He snaps. Which book are you looking for? You scan the various shelves which are labelled. Which book will you ask him for? To request the biographies of Balthus Dyer. Do we ask for the secrets of the Black Tower? Sorry, I can't speak. Or do we inquire after the creatures of the kingdom of Crag and Rock? Let's have a look. Which book? What a delightful choice. Let us rejoice. Because this is pretty much a book loving channel. And I have finished Legion now, so we can talk about that ending. Whew. We can talk about the whole book. Creatures of crack. Okay, let's pick a book together, everybody. The Secret of Fraggle Rock. I remember Fraggle Rock. Dante cares away. Stuart, do not report us to the BBC or I will report you to... Who is it? Magnus. Tell us more about Fraggle Rock. My favourite were the doozers. I was so cute. I just wanted a little toy doozer. They made all the little uh, scaffolding that the Fraggles ate. Remember? Oh, I'm glad you love Legion. It's so great. Okay, no spoilers, no spoilers in the chat. Gary has not finished the book. Close your eyes, Gary. History has a useful hint for later. David, that's kind of a spoiler, so don't do those. Let's... I think it's okay to spoil if we've already run through the room as a family. But, yeah. No blatant kind of tip giving. That's a rule. Okay, so it looks like we've had 24 votes. Thank you so much. 24 votes of 37 of us. So grateful that you're here. And thank you so much, everybody, for sticking with this. So we are going to get... To, we, we would like to take out, please, The Secrets of the Black Tower. So that is what we shall do. He indicates a section on the shelves and you take a book to one of the tables to read through it. The book is most enlightening, tracing the history of the Citadel. The Black Tower was built by Balthus Dyer's grandfather. As it became a sanctuary for the forces of evil, law and order gradually made way for chaos as the monstrous creatures battled their way up in the power hierarchy. Oh no. Dyer's grandfather eventually found it necessary to protect himself from his minions by setting up various protective traps between the creatures and his own dwellings. Most notable of these being the Doom Pit Trap. Ha <laughs> ha! And a magical combination lock on the door to his own room. The combination of the lock is 217. Yay! Oh my gosh! I feel like we really needed that lock. Um... You read further about the various secret passageways that permeate the Citadel. We may then choose to either ask Librarian for a section on Balthus Dyer, request the section on Creatures of Crag and Rock, or leave the room. Well, I think it would be particularly rude of us not to make the most. Yes, we can read all of them. Which one next? Um... I'd love to cosplay as Balthus Dyer. It would be such a deep cut. This music's good and ploddy. You had a wind up walking doozer? I'm so jealous, traitor. Uh, Gary, remember, leave the book on the table so the librarian can reshelve it correctly. That's good. Sean, oh, that's nice. It's a, fa <laughs> it's a family event layer. <laughs> It is, we're a little family. We're missing some, we're missing Jen. Jen's normally in the stream. 
Who's getting the lock combination tattooed on them so we don't forget it next session? Not me. I have no tattoos. Zero. Um, okay, so everybody would like to read about Balthus Dyer. He points to a section just above the floor which you peruse. Eventually you choose one volume and settle down to read through it. Balthus Dyer is apparently third in a line of sorcerer warlords ruling over the Black Tower and the Kingdom of Crag and Rock. He rose to power after the death of his father, Crag and Dyer, some years ago. What a name. The Dyers have been masters of black sorcery for generations, but their strength and power last during the night time only. Sunlight is like a poison to them. Shortly after his father's death, Balthus Dyer married the Lady Lucretia, herself a black sorceress, and since that time they have ruled together over the kingdom of Crag and Rock. As you finish the book, you notice the librarian is holding his hand to his ear, apparently listening to something. Uh-oh. He glances up at you quizzically. Oof. You may either look for another useful book, which may aid you on your quest by turning to 84, or attempt to leave the library through the door behind the librarian. Ooh. Jen! Oh, hi, Jen. Welcome. Well, it's great to have you here, even if you're not feeling talkative. I know how you feel. I had a hecky, hecky, thumpy, crazy roller coaster um, of anxiety this weekend. So I feel you, Jen. Just be with us. Just be here. I feel like we're missing somebody else as well. Okay, so we have options. Look for another book. Or... Oh no, it's now saying attempt to leave the library. You have to get past the librarian to do so. Is sorceress a word? I thought it was... Sorceress. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Gary will probably know. Oh, Jen, I'm sorry you're not feeling so good. Sending you lots and lots of love. Okay, so we have 17 votes and some are feeling cautious. Others are, it's like, it's very close. There are 18 votes and 53% versus 47. 19 votes. Oh, 23 votes. Okay, most people are saying look for another book. 62% of, well, 24 people. Yeah, let's all hammer that heart button so Jen knows that we are thinking of you. Okay, 28 votes. Let's end the poll. This could be the undoing of us. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Look for another book. Oh my goodness. Crikey Moses. Oh, I didn't bookmark anything. As you study the shelves, you hear a commotion behind you. You wheel round in time to see orc-like creatures armed and on guard, materialising one after the other behind you. They advance and surround you. The tallest one moves his face close to yours and blows a puff of breath straight into your eyes. The room spins and you slump to the ground unconscious. Oh, you wake up in a dirty room with rough walls cut into the rock. Iron bars in the window and the door confirm your suspicion that you are in a prison cell of some sort. There is not much you can do but sit on the straw mattress in one corner until someone appears. We're in prison? An hour or so later you hear a shuffling noise outside. Looking through the bars in the door you can see a lizard-like creature shuffling down the corridor carrying a mug and bowl. The beast has two heads which talk to each other as it walks. Its skin is grey and scaly and a long tail follows it up the passage. It stops at your door and pushes the bowl and mug through a small opening into your cell and then shambles off to sit at a table across the hall. You have been given bread and broth. Will you eat and drink or will you call out to this creature a calicorn? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I know, in, pr in prison for reading. What do we do? Why couldn't it be a unicorn? What's a calicorn? Does anybody even know? Is this something they've made up? 
Yuck, orc breath right in the eye. Oh, you're getting lots of love, Jen. We're there for you. Aztec, that escalated quickly. It certainly did, Aztec. I've changed my mind about this librarian. I've, sour I've soured on him. Stuart says, imprisoned for reading. Neil, anyone remember the vision from the fountain about the two-headed lizard? Don't want to reveal any spoilers. Turunen, okay, who goes to prison for reading in a library? Neil, Gary, thanks. I thought it looked weird. Yes, sorceress was spelt wrong in this book. Good work, Gary. Robbie, it's Lizard Trinch. Sean, maybe we had overdue books. Okay, so 26 votes and 54% are saying we're going to call out to the Calicorn. This creature is not very talkative, but you do discover that you are in the dungeons beneath the Black Tower and you will probably never be released unless you are given to the Ganges for sport. When you question him about Balthus Dyer, he goes silent. You'd better try a spell to get you out of this prison. Okay, let's see what we can try. I feel so bad because we mocked that fool skull spell and now we can never use it. An ESP spell? An illusion spell? Which, what shall we do? Let's see. I think, I think maybe a lot of people are feeling quite quiet this evening, Jen. I think a lot of people have had a rough old week. And it's so cold and the weather's just taken a turn, hasn't it? You know, never underestimate the effect of the weather on us humans. 50-50 at the moment. At least we have a spell scroll. I'm a, I, I think I've spoken on this before because I'm a girl of the 80s. I'm all about ESP. I was actually remembering an 80s kids TV show called Chockey's Children and the alien spoke into someone's brain with ESP. It was a really big thing in the 80s. If we remember the vision from last time, we can probably guess what the illusion is of. Callum, I cannot remember. Um, Callum, Neil, I remember it. Oh no, we're at 24 votes and it's 50-50. Come on, more people vote to break the tie please there are 38 watching so there's a potential 14 people who could break this tie nope okay we'll end the poll I'm going to just go with illusion okay you chant the words of the spell scroll quietly and concentrate on the illusion you're about to summon you can either convince him that he's being attacked by an enemy or make yourself disappear in the hope that he will come looking for you. Which illusion will you summon? To trick the Calicorn into thinking it's being attacked by an enemy? Or to make it seem as though you've disappeared, turn to the other? Yeah, so I think we can share the... If anyone remembers the vision, let's share the vision. Oh, hi, Dr. Jif. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for saying hello. Yay. I th it is the season. December will be full of people with um with uh, hangovers, I am sure. Yeah, so if someone could share the vision. Which vision should we use? Conjure an enemy. Okay. Calicorns are afraid of mice. Okay. Well, I feel like Neil is telling us the vision that we saw in the fountain. So Calicorns are scared of mice. Everybody in the voting is choosing invisible. Let's put a bookmark here, shall we? How do we add a bookmark? love a bookmark Simon says who should I thank for the channel membership Simon we've had a few giftings this evening so if you scroll up in the chat if you're able to 
I think you'll be able to see which of the three lovely, generous people it would be tonight. Um, I think that Neil gifted five memberships. Neil was the last one to do that. Um, Jesper was one. Yeah, if you scroll up, it will show you who gave it to you. Okie dokie. I'm going to end the poll. Everyone has chosen the invisible option. You disappear. You can, however, still watch the calicorn from your cell. To your consternation, the beast has not noticed that you've gone. You wait patiently, but to no avail. And now you're starting to worry that the spell will soon be wearing up. You kick the dust at your feet. The creature looks up and rushes over to your cell door. You are nowhere to be seen. It opens your door and enters the cell, but as it does, your spell begins to wear off. Try to trick me, eh? Says the calicorn as it grabs you. You will now have to fight the creature. Okie dokie. We don't have a weakness spell, so we must prepare to fight. Oof. Okie dokie. Let's go. Let's go. Let me move my little box again now, because once again it's in the wrong area. Woo! It's a draw, we both miss! Okay, oh we're going to be fine. We're a lot stronger. Yes! I think we're, we're going to take We don't need to use our luck. Yay. Another one. Not another one. Oh, another draw. This feels, feels bad. I don't really like killing. Oh, okay. We took a hit quite a lot actually yes okay we're gonna win we're gonna win yeah the music is amazing so happy this is not the same as when I was reading it from the book oh oof. okay we're down to 13 we should have eaten that food 20! Oh, it's not D&D. &D. But that is a killing blow. Yay! Oh, that was a cute little flourish. For a series called Fighting Fantasy, it really does make us terrified of combat. We so are. Is there a festive special Fighting Fantasy book we could do? I don't know. We should look that up. Um... I don't remember the Omega Factor, but I'll look that up. Okay, so we did triumph. We have used up a little bit of our stamina and stuff. But, you know, not bad. Could be worse. Move the little thing out of the way again. The little thingo. Okay, so we can leave and let's see where we are. Okay, that's interesting. So it looks like... We got taken to the jail from the library, which was south. So I don't know whether we'll get the opportunity to go to the game room. Probably not, but good to know. The passageway twists and turns, eventually ending in a flight of stairs going upwards. You climb the stairs and find yourself in a short passage ending at a dead end. As you examine the wall, you discover a short lever which you pull. The rock face ahead opens slightly and closes behind you as you walk through. You are now standing in front of a door which is locked. Will we try to break it down? Or will we try using a strength scroll? Okay. Here we go. Let's see, what do we do? Okay, we still have 39 people in the chat. Thank you so much, everybody. It's so nice. 
of us to be together. 43, it says here. Crikey. Crikey, blimey. I think we're going to try and go till 10. We might try and do some Q&As or some talk about some other stuff. Depends how far we get, right? Okay. Wow. Even though we have this... I mean, I just want to pull out our little thingy because we do have... We do have two scrolls of strength. And, yeah, so... I mean, it's... I don't know. At the moment, 63% is saying try to break it. So... Hmm... There's 19 votes and 42 watching. But it does seem like quite a large amount of people do want to break this door down. Okay. Let me just, uh, <laughs> okay. As you hit the door, the wood cracks a little, but does not give. You try it again, and this time the wood splits down the middle. You break your way through and enter the room behind it. Oh, yay us. Lovely. Okay. I mean, someone's just written, caverns of snow, which could be seasonal. Well, it could be. We could, yeah, we could try and pick that close to Christmas. It just... It'd be nice to finish this one first, but well, let's see what happens. You now stand in a large round room. It's lit by a single torch fixed into one wall. There is no furniture in the room, save for a rough wooden table and a chair in the center. Hovering above the mat, the table, fast asleep, is a very small man dressed in a green shirt and pantaloons. We've been here before. He cannot be more than a meter tall, and you cannot believe that he's still asleep after your entrance. You hear a creak and turn to your right in time to see a small catapult fire a missile of some sort straight at you. It's going to hit you unless you use a shielding spell. If you choose to shield, or you can choose not to. Hmm. Okay. No idea what we do here last time. Don't bother. I'm just sick of this dude at this point. We've seen Seamus so many times. You better believe I'm bookmarking every page. Every page. Oh. That's interesting. So, don't bother is 64% right now. Hi, everybody watching. Welcome, welcome if you're new. We play uh, fighting fantasy games and you create the results that we need. Oh, shoot. Also, if you like what we do here, please do hit the like and subscribe button. I get in trouble a lot for not saying that and doing all the things. I should have pinned a comment saying that at the top of the chat. I'm so sorry. Um, yes, I also have a Patreon and please check out my other videos. I'm so bad at that. Okay, we are not going to bother. We are going to just carry on you try to duck but you cannot avoid the full impact of the missile which hits you on the forehead and splatters all over your face you brace yourself waiting perhaps for an acidic reaction to take place but the mushy liquid merely drips off your face onto the ground cautiously you test it first with your finger then with your tongue you've just been hit by a ripe tomato you turn to face the sleeping figure who's beginning to stir Cautiously, you approach little man. As you get close, a single eye opens and looks you straight in the face. A wide grin spreads between the creature's ears and he disappears. Good morning to you, says a chirpy little voice behind you, and you swivel around to see him standing there, still grinning. I'm O'Seamus the Leprechaun, he chuckles, and holds his hand out to you. He seems friendly enough. Will you shake his hand? Or will you draw his sword? Draw your sword. I feel like, hi Flynn, Flynn, I feel like we should know this room by heart now. <laughs> We've been in here so many times. A thrilling fantasy adventure in which you is used as a plural, lol. Oh yeah, and Patreon, I have a Patreon as well. Evening, 44 people are watching, yay! I feel like this is almost a record. Welcome to the Citadel of Chaos, where we were deciding whether to befriend or to kill this leprechaun. With 25 votes, 
26 votes will end the poll and we will shake his hand and try to befriend him. You grasp his hand and introduce yourself and cry out as the nerves down your arm go numb. O'Shamus bursts out laughing. You lose one skill point as you are using your sword arm, which for many of us is left-handed. You are becoming angry, but the little man continues to shake your hand and laugh. A laugh comes from behind you and you look round to see him floating in the air, grinning, but you are still shaking his hand in front of you, or are you? In fact, you realise you are now frantically shaking hands with a stuffed dummy, which is flopping around on the end of your arm as you shake it. You throw it to the ground, but it's stuck to your hand. This situation is ludicrous and you are becoming very angry. Just a little joke, says the leprechaun who snaps his fingers. The dummy disappears. Now, what can I do for you? Will you ask him the way onwards or draw your sword? What do we do? Or, I mean, we all know, we all know what we need to do, don't we? We've been here before. We've been with O'Shamus many a time. Yeah, 85% are saying, ask the way forwards. Yep. 80, art attack, draw sword, lol. Very good. Oh, we've missed you. We've missed the humour. It's back in the room, people. 45 people watching. Welcome to the channel. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Okay, we are going to end that poll and we're going to ask him the way onwards. Let's go. Oh, I shouldn't go this way, says O'Shamus. These are not pleasant parts. Three, these three doors are the only ways onwards. Two of them are very dangerous and the other is very smelly. On the opposite side of room are three doors. There's a brass handled door, a copper handled door and the bronze handled door. So we can go for the, a choice of these now or we can ask O'Shamus. And I'm hopeless at these. I can rem never remember what we're doing. Okay. There we go. So let's see, let's see, what do we do? Oh my gosh. Duncan, 6am on a Monday. Crikey. Oh, I'm sorry about your coffee flavoured advent calendar. Let's have a look on the map. So, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, this is the map. But we can do a bookmark here and then cheat if we need to. I can't believe I said that. I'll do a little zoomy. Hi, Duncan from Oz. Where do you work, Duncan? Uh, copper was option twice. Hi, Steve. You've been quiet. Nice to see you. Jesper, bookmark. Amen. We will bookmark. 100%. Oh, Duncan, it's so chilly. So, so chilly. Okay. So, overwhelmingly, people would like to ask our little leprechaun again. Which would I take? He muses. Let's see. I would not take the one two doors to the left of the copper handled one, nor the door to the right of the bronze handled one. So the copper handled is gonna be on the right. The bronze is gonna be in the middle. And the brass is the one on the left. So I don't think we should take the brass one. I think I've worked that out correctly, I don't know. My reasoning is, if their copper handled door has two doors to the left of it, it must be the furthest right. And if the bronze has a door to the right of it, it's got to be in the middle. So the one we shouldn't take is the brass one, if we believe Seamus. I don't know if that logic is correct. 
It would be the first time I've ever unpuzzled one of those things in my life if I have done that. And then we don't know if we can trust Seamus or not. But it doesn't really matter what I think, does it? Because we are playing the Citadel of Chaos where you decide what happens to us. Have at it, please. Take your, take your vote, take your opportunity. Let's see what happens. How is everybody? There are 42 people watching. How many people are painting as they watch and what are you painting? Uh, I'm just wondering why my power is not working. It's a little bit worrying. Are we plugged in? Okay, we're not plugged in. That would be useful. I'm just gonna plug in. Ooh. I always think of Duncan from June when I hear the name Duncan and I also think of Duncan from Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. Okay, so end poll and we have selected the bronze door. Let's go. We open the door and step into another room, glad to have left the annoying little creature behind. I forgot to bookmark. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Ah, a sudden intense flash of light bursts out in front of you. You shield your eyes and then rub them, but you cannot see. Panic hits you as you hear a low growling noise. Padded footsteps come closer and you cry out in pain as this unseen creature roars and embeds its sharp teeth in your leg. What will you do? Well, we can do a strength or a sword. Okay. Let's see, someone's written, us painters think of Dustin Rhodes, our lord and saviour of the two thin coats. Duncan from Macbeth, not even when they took my eyes. Duncan, bread. Building the motivation to do a Primaris captain and I really can't be asked. lol. 34 degrees, I want to be in Australia. Painting Tyranids, no, no, they are my scariests. Was painting some orcs then moved the drawing models from my keyboard to chat. Back to painting in a moment. Okay, so people really don't want to use our spells. They are suggesting that we fight. Okay, how many bookmarks can one human have? Let's end the poll. Let's do the swordy thing. You slash about madly with your sword, but you cannot hit the creature. Either it's extremely quick or it has no solid body for you to hit. Its teeth are now tearing at your flesh and you can feel blood on your leg. Ugh. You will have to protect yourself with magic or face certain death from this unseen creature. Okay, so let's do a strength spell. Oh, you feel strength surging through your body. You try to wrestle with the head of this creature, but its own strength seems to have increased to match yours. Your leg is now useless and covered in blood. Your strength begins to fade, and as it does so, the creature's jaws close in on your throat. Consciousness fades. You awake and look around. As your memory returns, you are amazed that you can see. Your leg feels tender, but is uninjured. You hear a small chuckle coming from above, and suddenly the whole thing makes sense. Ah, oh, I forgot this. We've wasted a freaking sword. We remember this from last time. Ugh. You chuckle and giggle, we have a laugh, and then he says, You are a good sport. Your way is fraught with danger, though. Perhaps these will help you. With a wave of his hand, a sword and a plate appear on the table. The sword is a magical battle sword and increases our skill by one point. The, fine the plate is, in fact, a silver mirror of fine workmanship. You take these with you, but you will have to leave your old sword behind. That's fine with us. So let's just look at our adventure sheet. And so we've now got a magical battle sword and we've got a silver mirror and our knowledge down there as well. Yay, combination is 217. So we have a plus one to skill. Amazing. Great. Happy for that. Jesus freaking Christ, oh Seamus. <laughs> uh, bloody leprechaun, I know. Every time he gets us. 
Collie Root says, special paint project is the, back, the Black Talons, a special forces Stormcast Eternal team from Age of Sigmar. Whose story on Warhammer TV has one of the best twists in all Warhammer? Is it canon if it's on Warhammer TV? Um, that's why the doors weren't mapping, I guess. Yes, I think you're right. Okay, so which door do we use? This is the same pole again. And maybe we'll be allowed to leave for real this time? Okay, have at it, dear friends. Brave hearts, let us know where we will wander next. Also, I could do a little cheeky place a bookmark, couldn't I? Okay, so I think I worked out that the brass one was the one we would not go into. But it is as we say, your decision. So, there are 15 votes. At the moment, Copper is in the lead. Oh. Okay. 20 votes. Let's do it. Let's do it. And the winner was Copper. Oh, crikey. The door opens and you enter a narrow corridor. A narrow, a narrow corridor. You follow it for some time until you finally come to another door. This time, a wide carved door with the inscription "Wine Cellar" set into it. You try the handle and it opens. Poking your head round the door, you can see rows and rows of racks full of bottles, full of wine. The room is dimly lit by several candles. Your opening the door has caused a little bell to ring, and a figure is lim limping up to you and a figure is limping towards you up to one of the aisles will you draw your sword and prepare to defend yourself or will you see what this person might have to say oh well i know what i want to do i want to see what they want to say but it's not up to me it's up to you so have at it let's start the poll let's see what the people say we have 35 people who are sticking along. Thank you all so much. So kind. Very appreciated. I'm always very, I'm always in a, well, quite often in a state of like just terror and fear, but this always kind of soothes my soul. So it's really lovely. We've actually had 134 views so far this evening, which is insane and really lovely. So thank you all. Doesn't the butler limp, says Robbie. Oh, Robbie, maybe they all limp. So we're gonna end that poll. And we have 23 votes. And 91% are also curious to see what the person will say. An elf, an elf. The elf approaching you is skinny and ragged. He asks whether you're a guest or an adventurer. You tell him you're a guest, come down to sample the wine he keeps in his famous wine cellar. With certain pride, he shows you the vintage bottles he keeps for his lord, the Demi-Sorcerer. Some of them, he claims, have magical powers. He offers to let you sample the wine. What? Yay, wine tasting! Uh, which vintage will you sample? Well, <laughs> if you would like to try the red wine, we can try a red, white or rosé. I don't drink, but when I used to, I was a rosé girl, because obviously roses. But how lovely is this? Why are there not more wine cellar wine tasting options in adventures? So happy that this is happening. Let's stick this poll up. Here we go. Have at it, my friends. Let's pick a wine. Where did that line about the wine come from? An elf. <laughs> Ian has left the channel. Wine tasting with an elf is like my wildest dream. In my D&D &D wedding, maybe it could start with uh, an elf doing a wine tasting. Bookmark. Yes, great idea, Fabian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, 1982. More underage drinking for the children of the 90s. Absolutely. Okay. So, 25 votes. 
It's not bad, you know. 25 votes out of 39 watching. Which wine? It's going to be the rosé. 27 votes. That's very respectful. Respectable. Hmm. Oh my god. You take a couple of sips. Not bad. You take a mouthful, but as you do so, you wonder why the elf is chuckling. Suddenly he asks, no, not a bad elf. He asks whether you are really a guest. Although your mind is confirming that you are indeed a visitor, your voice is telling him that you are not. You have come to put an end to Balthus Dyer's pan's conquest. <laughs> no, we dobbed ourselves in. You curse as you realise the wine must have been spiked with a truth serum. The black elf now knows of your mission and must be prevented from telling others. You draw your sword and as you, as you do so, he pulls a small metallic device from his pouch tied around his waist. With a touch, it turns into a saw-edged weapon. Oh, crikey. Oh, you recognise the device as a pocket myriad, an enchanted gadget which can become any one of a number of weapons or useful artifacts. You both close for battle. You may fight him with your sword or try casting a spell. We know that we need that pocket myriad. Okay. Never trust an elf. I love elves. How could they betray me? What we do... I mean, I kind of want to cast a spell. But this is not up to me. It is up to the plural you. The poll is open. There are 42 people watching. Have at it. Let's decide. Oh, Andre, we need cheese for the wine. Dr. Jiff, it was the rosé that did it for me last night. Gary, I wouldn't trust an Aldari sommelier. Well, yeah, we've, uh, we've figured that out. I think you're right, Gary. Can't trust him. Call your up. Yes, we do need a pocket myriad. We do indeed. We fell short at, that la at a later hurdle last time. Okay, so 73%. Yeah, we have like nearly 30 people saying cast the spell. We're going to cast the spell. An identical elf with a pocket myriad appears and begins to fight. You manage to slip away as he's preoccupied fighting a copy of himself. No! Damn it, did we F ourselves there? Shoot. Should we have done the sword thing? And killed him and got that pocket myriad. Oh no, I'm having a crisis of faith, faith here. Okay. I never normally offer this option. Let's see. Alex, as a former dwarf player, I'd say betrayal is just what elves do. <laughs> uh, Neil, yep, go back to the last bookmark. 20 votes. Yay, two thirds are saying yes, go back. Okay, let's do that. I'm doing the polls quick, so uh, we get to do as much as possible. Okay, we're going to take the rosé wine. And then we're going to fight. You must fight! Oh gosh. Okay. Can you all see the fighting? Okay. Oof. The elf hits us. This is a bop. We both miss. But we're still dancing. Yes! We don't need luck. Oh, maybe we do. Yay. Woohoo! He did. Elf down. Yay. Excellent. We sorted that out well. If you defeat the master of the cellar, turn to 272. Indeed we do. You go through his pockets, loot the bodies, and find eight gold pieces. The pocket myriad has unfortunately been damaged in the fight, but you may be able to find some use for it and take it with you. Yay! Now we can either investigate the cellar 
or press on through the room. Ooh, what should we do? Yes, we should heal up, shouldn't we? How do we use our... How do we? Oh, because it doesn't have rations in this. So I guess it's the scroll of stamina we're going to use? Hmm. Do we use... There's no other way to, like, heal ourselves, is there? Hmm, nope. Okay, so, so should we just use our scroll, do we think? Yeah, he's named after Derek Smalls. <laughs> he does go to 11. Yeah, okay, let's just use this. Okay, so our stamina is back up to 14. And what are we going to do? We're going to investigate 97% of 29 votes. Pretty clear. The bottles and caskets contain hundreds of different types of wine. Some are exceedingly old and valuable. You decide there is room in your pack for one bottle. In a corner, there is a table laid out for sampling with two bottles and glasses. You could sample some of the wine. If you try a sample of red or white, what are we going to do? Hmm. Or we, you know, one of, I don't know if the rosé was the only bad one, but one could be a poison. So I'll bookmark just in case. Okay, what do we want to do? Sample all the wine before leaving, says Corpin. Spoken like a true adventurer. 45 people are watching. Yay, thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Please do like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. We are going through the Citadel of Chaos book. There are a bunch of fun videos. Please do like and subscribe. I thought I'd just say hi before bed, work at 4 a.m. Oh my god, A Kirby. Yeah, sleep well. We'll be finishing at 10 anyway. I hope you have a good sleep and I hope you have a good Monday. Okay. So with 28 votes, the winner is let's try the white wine. There are 46 people watching. That's a lot of people. Hello. The wine is rather bitter. And as you savor it in your mouth, you feel a burning sensation. You spit the wine to the ground and to your amazement, a jet of flame flies from your lips. You make take a sample of the wine and use it in substitute of a mage's fire spell scroll. You head towards the door leading further into the cellar. Yay. So we have an additional scroll of fire now. Wonderful. At the far end of the wine cellar is a wooden door which you try. It opens out onto a passageway which leads onwards for several meters. Some way along the passage you arrive at a four-way junction. You take a path to the north which eventually leads you to a large wooden door. You can hear nothing by listening at the keyhole. Will you try to open the door slowly and quietly? Or you could try charging the door down. Okay. Flyan says, Pe uh, white wine seems petrol, it seems. Absolutely. Charge the door. Start the poll. Hi and bye, Kirby. I'm on a sleep shift in a supported living house tonight. Oh, David, that's... Very lovely that you're doing that. Okay, looks like lots of people want to open quietly. That's so nice. We're very, we're such a polite squad. There are 48 people watching now. Eek, that's so exciting. Welcome everybody. Charge it how much? Lol. Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. I think we will go quietly into the night. The handle turns and you step into a dark room. You look around the room, it's lit only by your torch. 
Although a fairly large room, it has little furniture in it. Although a large boulder sliced flat resembles a table and a smaller rock resembles a type of stool behind it. They need, a, they need a Warhammer chair, don't they? In one corner, a pile of rocks are held together with mud. You cannot imagine their purpose, although they support three wooden chests. Then you jump with fright as your torch lights up a large creature, seemingly made of rock itself, standing by the door. It is roughly human shaped, although somewhat larger. Its eyes are staring straight at you, but you cannot be sure it's actually seeing you. What will you do? Will you run for the other door? Try and speak to the creature or like to move slowly towards the boxes in the corner. Definitely a bookmark. Let's see what we do. What are you all thinking about doing? And although I recognize these illustrations, I really have no memory of what we do. Robbie, you do, you remember it's a golem. Okay, the poll is live, have at it, dear friends. Oh, one second, I have a call. Hello? I'm just streaming, can I call you back at 10? Okay, love you lots. Bye. Oh, love my family. Okay, so. 23 votes of 44 watching, 24 votes. Let's end the poll. And the decision is to speak to the creature. The creature must communicate in some method unknown to you. You hail it in all the languages you know, but it continues to stand silently. You make a move towards the center of the room. At your first movement, the creature seems to break from its trance and steps towards you. You may either run for the far end of the room or make for the boxes and risk taking on this silent giant. So I'm just gonna look at the pole. <laughs> option five, run away. Um, option four, change underwear. Flyan, you really add a lot of humor to this chat. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Um, I'm gonna take the second option, which was moved to the boxes. Okay, so the golem advances towards you and it's a very slow moving creature, but all the boxes are locked. How will we confront the golem? Should we draw our sword, cast a fire spell, cast a creature copy spell or run away? Um, and we've got all of these options are open to us. So let's see what we did. Was it successful, Robbie? Sword, fire, copy, run away. What are we gonna do? Let's see, three votes were straight in there, super, super quick. Copy 69%, lol. 14 votes, 15 votes. I'm gonna end it quick and let's just do the copy spell. That was such a, a strong one. A perfect copy of the golem forms in front of you. You command it to attack the real golem, which is almost upon you. While the crea your creation distracts the original, you have the chance to examine the boxes. Oh my gosh, so many choices. We just got the boxes, Fabian. can't see the sword or fire being very effective. Indeed, no, indeed, Duncan, you are correct. I think maybe the chat might be lagging. Sorry about that if it is. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. He bravely ran away. <laughs> oh, interesting. It's always interesting when you just have to pick from like boxes. But there's a definite, there's a definite, I'm not gonna spoil the outcome, but there's a definite favorite of which box we will open. Okay, so, it looks like everyone is going for box number two, the second box. Oh, we can't open it. 
we strike it and we lose one point from our skill score. Crikey. Okay, so the next most popular box was box number three. Oh my god! We can't break this lock either. We lose two stamina points because the box falls on our shin. And let's try and open the first box. Come on. In oh, inside box one is a silver key. What would you like to do with it? <laughs> so which box should we use the silver key on? Two or three? At least we know if we come back through this room, we know that the silver key is in the box, the first box. Fighting fantasy deal or no deal. We just need Noel Edmonds, don't we? 100% on two, interesting. It's a popular box, that number two. 82% are saying number two. Can we just take what's behind the curtain that Ga Carol is standing in front of? Yeah, we'll just take the speedboat. Okay. So let's do the second box. The key turns and removing the lock, you open the box to find another key, this time cut in glowing green metal. Yes, we're gonna try that key. Oh my gosh. The key turns, the lock clicks open and you look inside the box. Inside the box is a glass jar and inside this jar is a spider, but this is not a normal spider. This creature has the face of an old man. He's talking to you, but you cannot make out what he's saying. A noise startles you and you spin around to see that the door, the one you came through, is beginning to open. You put the jar in your bag and make for the other door. What the heck do we have in our bag? Spider in a jar. Well, that looks a lot healthier, doesn't it? Like previously, we've had way less stuff. So that feels quite good. But that's a bit icky. A spider in a jar. Let's have a look at what you would have won. Yes, David, silver is for second place, makes sense. We're definitely doing a much better job of collecting things this time through. I know, let's place a bookmark because although we're doing good at collecting, our stamina is low. You open the door and step forwards into a passageway which runs eastward for several meters and ends at the foot of a staircase. Okay. Interesting. So this is very different to what we've done before. You climb the stairs and eventually find yourself in a narrow passageway. A short distance ahead, you can see an opening into a large well-lit room. You press on forwards. Aha! This is where we started. This is where we started. The room you're in is a grand dining hall. Uh, a long table large enough to see loads of people stands in the centre. Various doors and passageways lead from the room, but you're particularly interested in the two staircases leading upstairs. There are paintings and suits of armor. The room is empty. We have options. We know that when we inspected the suits of armor, they kicked our ass. They took some stamina from us, so I would suggest we don't do that again. But having said that, it's not up to me. It's up to you as a collective. And I'm leaving off the armor option just because because I don't want to get slapped. I don't want to get bitch slapped by an armor again. I'd say it's more of a man spider, says Neil. <laughs> Is the Spider-Man Stan Lee? I know, a creeping old man spider, so scary. Yay! Everyone's in a everyone wants to look at the art. Very excited for that. Yep, strong opinions on looking at the art. Very cool. Let's look at the paintings. The paintings are... Fucking hell. The paintings are portraits of various lord and countesses prominent in the kingdom of Crag and Rock. Behind a chair at the head of a table is a portrait of Balthus Dyer himself. He does indeed look a powerful adversary. Add one luck for the warning of his appearance, but lose one stamina for the feeling of fear he instills. You may now continue up the left or right staircase. So looking at the pole, the left staircase was more popular. Oh, 
The staircase creaks as your foot falls on it. You try to ascend as quietly as possible, but the old timbers groan under your weight. Suddenly, one of the stairs click as if to trigger a switch of some kind. To your surprise, all of the stairs flick downwards. So it might be quite poetic to finish at this point because this was where we began. Bye, Duncan. So lovely that you hung out with us. Have a great day. I know. I try so hard to keep this PG-13. Uh, greetings, true believers. In this thrilling issue, we're going to discover when a door is not a jaw, but it's who's in the jar? One gold in the swear jar. Oh, gosh. Well, I think we can comfortably afford to leave our adventures here as we have kind of come full circle this evening. We're right back where we started from, but if we look at our map, we've covered a completely different adventure path. And we also have a much healthier equipment sheet. So I'm gonna read this out. The adventure sheet says we have uh, spells of ESP, strength, fire, creature copy, levitation and shielding. And we have in our backpack, a glowing green key, the backpack, spider in a jar, bottle of wine, lantern, silver key, pocket myriad, silver mirror. We have eight gold pieces and a, a note of the combination, which is 217. I am gonna try and do show me the minis on Wednesday night. I've invited my friend Henry who won a golden demon to see if he can come and join us. Um, but it depends on me being back in London in time. I'm having to go and look at, scout some, uh, just do some stuff like looking out for my mum and hopefully I'll be back in time. Uh, so no promises, but I am aiming to try and do a, a mini stream at eight. Um, we've chosen that option three times, Neil. Amazing. Yay, I'm glad you're happy with where we're ending, Gary. Dark Star, hi Dark Star, welcome to the chat. Stairs creak due to all the gear you're looting around. Yay, but hopefully, um, as usual, I really hope everybody has a really gentle, kind and loving week. If you have scary stuff coming up, as I do, I'm just saying this to myself as well as you all, remember that you are loved, we have friends and we can reach out to people and just try and be really gentle with ourselves and not worry because there's no point in worrying. Even though that is my national pastime, there's just no point in it. Um, but it's been so good to see everybody and thank you for joining the chat. Thank you to all the gifts for the members as well. So, so kind, all the super fan um, shenanigans we've had this night. We've got a bunch more members now, which is just absolutely so lovely. We're so spoiled. So thank you all, everybody. Um, really good to see familiar faces as usual. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's good to have our little family. Yeah, I'm just seeing everyone in the chat saying all the lovely things. Oh, Alex! Fucking hell! Thank you, mate. That's incredibly kind. I uh, hope everything goes well with your parents. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to look after my mama. Um, oh, I love spending time too, Neil. Thank you. Uh, it's a lovely evening. Dust lift the mood, doesn't it? Thank you, Gary. A fun session. All the lucks with the scouting in week. Thank you, Caprice. Nice to hear from you. Oh, take care, Aztec. Take care, Simro. Really lovely to see you all. Bye, Sean. Bye, Robbie. Bye, Electric Blue Omelette Dragon. Thank you so much. Bye, Neil. It's so lovely, isn't it, Callum? It's really nice. See you all Wednesday. Uh, yay, I love your little cool face, Steve. Oh, uh, I don't have any gold, but when I find some, I will put it in the swear jar. Thanks, Mira and chat. Take care of yourselves during the week. Yes. Alex, thank you so much for that money. That's so nice of you. Going into the Titan Fund. Goodbye, Tuonen. Bye, Jim. Bye, Gary. Everyone, take care of yourselves. And lots and lots of love. Bye. I'll see if I can end the stream properly now. Jen, we are all sending you loads of love. Take good care of yourself. We got you. Bye. If that works. <laughs>